Officially labeled a rocket launcher, the M202 Flash stood for Flame Assault Shoulder. It was intended to replace the World War II M1 and M2 flamethrowers that were used as standard incendiary devices by the military all the way to the 1960s. A prototype was tested in the Vietnam War, allowing soldiers to give feedback to improve the flaming rocket launcher. Its use was supposedly discontinued after the conflict, but it, or a variant of it, has allegedly been carried into combat in modern conflicts. The true nature of the weapons used today is mired in denials and secrecy. Flamethrower Warfare Warfare flamethrowers were first introduced as part of trench warfare during the First World War. They were used more heavily during the Second World War. Variants included portable versions, tank-adjacent weapons, and vehicle-mounted throwers. Flamethrower fire was directed primarily against fortifications and other protected emplacements that may otherwise have been impenetrable. Rather than projecting fire in the traditional sense, flamethrowers usually stream a flammable liquid, thereby allowing the flames to be bounced across walls to ceilings. It also allowed for shooting into unseen spaces, such as bunkers and pillboxes. Although many mistakenly believe that flamethrowers have short ranges, modern flamethrowers can actually set ablaze targets that are as far as 330 feet from the gunner. Flamethrower Problems While flamethrowers are often thought of as terrifying weapons that any soldier would be rightfully afraid of, they have historically been quite vulnerable. The soldier-held versions had many limitations, chief among them their substantial fuel tanks, which made the bearer a potentially explosive target. Flamethrowers were deemed such a failure during World War I that they inspired little new research, and no new significant developments were made in the interwar years. The American E-1 flamethrower didn't draw interest until 1940, and even then, experimentation suggested it was unfit for military operations. A more refined version eventually emerged in the form of the M-1, a 72-pound weapon with a firing range of 20 yards. By the end of 1942, it was sent to the South Pacific Theater, where it was modified. This updated version of the flamethrower, the M1A1, was lighter and could fire to distances 50 yards away. The successor of both these flamethrowers was the M2, which could incorporate fuel thickeners, namely napalm, which made them more lethal. When it was full of fuel and propellant, it weighed 68 pounds. The M2 was used in combat at the island of Guam, and later during the Korean War. However, the weapon wasn't very successful, and most of them were sold off as scrap. The weight of the flamethrowers made them extremely difficult to maneuver, but they also came with other issues. For example, the M1 would often malfunction, and the soldiers were forced to ignite the flame gun with cigarette lighters. To fire the M2, the soldier had to expose his upper torso, which left him exposed to enemy attack. A new solution. Once World War II ended, the US again spent few resources on flamethrower development. By the start of the Vietnam War, it reportedly was the troops on the ground that had imagined and suggested a new solution. Their request was to replace the traditional flamethrower with an incendiary rocket launcher. When the resulting M202 Flash was integrated into the army, it became the last officially known American flamethrower. Early hints of the upcoming development began with the 1955 procurement request for a, quote, flamethrower with minimum weight components, according to a Chemical Corps report. The Army Department, focused on the development of chemical weapons such as toxins and poisonous gases, was also seeking to create deadly incendiary munitions. They desired a portable weapon with a single shot that could either be reused or discarded depending on the situation. The project was intended to replace the cumbersome and sizable flamethrowers at the time. When fully loaded, most of them were too bulky to be useful in fierce fighting. Furthermore, soldiers needed to be 200 feet away from their target to get a good shot, which would only last for around 9 seconds before running out of fuel. Vietnam Request when the United States entered the Vietnam War in 1965, the soldiers brought the old flamethrowers with them, but the ongoing issues plaguing the weapons led many troops to leave them behind while in combat. Oftentimes, they just became extremely flammable and easy targets for the enemy. Although the flamethrowers could be used to effectively clear jungle paths or eliminate hidden enemies, specially trained flamethrower operators were seen as particularly vulnerable targets to hit. As a result, officers tried to limit how often these soldiers were placed on the front lines. Instead, Flamethrowers were deployed behind active combat for terrain operations. They were primarily used to seal up tunnels and bunkers after use, or to form clearings and destroy foliage the Viet Cong could use for hiding. However, acknowledging the tactical advantage provided by incendiary weapons in the dense jungle, American commanders still desired an improved version that their troops could actually use in combat without becoming incredibly vulnerable. In response to their requests, the Army set to work and produced a relatively simple rocket launcher labeled the Multi-Shot Portable Flame Weapon. 
It was a four-barrel weapon, capable of shooting 66mm incendiary projectiles in rapid succession. The effort was celebrated by many. Army Lieutenant General Frank Mildren stated the following during a debriefing in 1970, quote, The weapon reflects a radical departure from traditional flamethrowers. It relieves the field soldier from the burden of mixing flame fuels for the weapons. While the improvements were useful, there was much more to be done. The soldiers in the Vietnam War started sending their feedback, and the Army listened. Soon enough, they would have the superior M202 Flash. The Flash With the improvements suggested by foot soldiers, the Army was able to declare this new and improved flamethrower an absolute success. And thanks to the on-the-ground testing in Vietnam, they were able to approve and distribute the flamethrowing rocket launcher M202A1 Flash to infantry units. In comparison to its predecessors, the Flash eliminated many of the drawbacks of the old flamethrowers. Most soldiers could be trained to use it, and it had a maximum range of a little more than 800 yards. The substantial increase in range made it much more trustworthy to American soldiers. The M202 was loaded with M74 rockets that were equipped with M325 warheads. The projectiles used 1.3 pounds of triethyl aluminum, a substance referred to by the military as a, quote, thickened pyrophoric agent. Similar to white phosphorus, which burns at 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, it burned at 2900 degrees Fahrenheit when exposed to outdoor air. Due to its aluminum content, it could burn hotter than either napalm or gasoline. Furthermore, the emission of heat and thermal radiation could burn a target without it being in direct contact with the flames. The weapon itself was made with four tubes capable of loading the rockets. Its caliber of 66mm was intended to be shared with the anti-tank rocket launcher M72 Law, which meant it could be used as such as well. Interestingly though, no high-explosive anti-tank rounds were ever developed for the flamethrower. To fire the device, it needed to be placed on the soldier's right shoulder. It could be fired from a range of positions, including crouching. A clip held a set of four rockets together, which could be introduced at the rear of the flamethrower, making it easy to carry and load simultaneously. According to the troops in Vietnam, the weapon received a rate of a 50% chance of hitting the intended target if all four rockets were synchronously fired. At distribution, they were issued on a per-needed basis, in most cases delivering one for every rifle platoon. Still, headquarters and the rifle companies could be granted as many as nine. No specialized gunners were trained, resulting in one or two riflemen receiving them as their standard weapon. One problem it never truly solved was the bulkiness. While less heavy than the M2 flamethrower, it was still somewhat awkward to carry. Due to these issues with weight and reliability, as well as the possible negative public opinion on flamethrowers, the weapon was not adopted for standard use. Many were sent into storage, even as it remains part of the military's arsenal. Unfortunately for fans of flamethrowers, the weapon's success was short-lived. Although there are no international or national rules banning the use of these weapons, the Pentagon mostly abandoned the use of traditional flamethrowers by the late 1970s. The Flash, supposedly intended to be the next big thing in this regard, did not see widespread use after the Vietnam War. Its use in modern conflicts has been repeatedly denied, despite evidence to the contrary. Swords The M202 is difficult to trace in real-world usage, partly due to its fair share of mishaps, partly due to its general discontinuation, and partly due to some secrecy surrounding the weapon. Still, despite denials from the army, sufficient evidence has been found to support the belief that these weapons have been used during America's War on Terror, including soldier reports from Afghanistan. The majority of fire-throwing launchers and rockets gathered dust in arsenals, awaiting an official decision on how, when, and whether they would be used or destroyed. The M202 Flash enjoyed a longer career in media appearances than it did perhaps as an actual weapon. It was notably featured in 1985 in Commando, held by Arnold Schwarzenegger, among other films and video games. It's believed that many of the weapons remain in storage, and that they may continue to be used along with other experimental projects. As recently as 2004, one was attached to a Talon robot, which was meant to clear bombs. The experiment, labeled SWORDS, standing for Special Weapons Observation Reconnaissance Detection System, was allegedly only a proof-of-concept project. Yet it seems unlikely that the Pentagon will revive the use of flamethrowers in the military. At least, for now.